<clears throat> Hello. Hi, nice sub glitch. And hey, Monsieur. Well, welcome. Thanks for joining. How did you, uh, how'd you hear about the stream? Hey, Super Yeti. Oh, from my YouTube channel. Interesting. I should probably do more with the YouTube channel, huh? Doing pretty good. I'm excited to have uh, new music to share. Hey, String Beanie. Hey, Thomas. All right, let's uh, let's get started. You want to hear the new thing? Looks like I put the Boxengo on the wrong channel here. Hang on, let me uh, set this up properly. Move this track. Hey, TJ. Welcome back. Well, hey, a lot of, lot of first timers. Hello. Welcome. All right, so for those of you who don't know, uh, I'm Ben. You probably know me from my work on FTL or Into the Breach or The Dark Side Detective. Um, and twice a week, every Tuesday and Wednesday, I share whatever I'm working on. And in the last couple of months, it's just been below zero because that's really all I've been working on lately. Uh, I'm currently working on Subnautica below zero. It's the It's the standalone expansion to Subnautica, and to be clear, I did not work on the original uh, Subnautica. Hey, Pinky Pancakes, that is a fantastic name. Hey, Time Traveler, well, I'm just about to get started, so you didn't actually miss anything. Hey, Joth, welcome back. All right, so this is maybe gonna be used for the title screen music, I'm not sure. Um, I had this sort of idea of doing title music, so the, the inspiration was whenever I would play Below Zero, uh, I was sort of, uh, disappointed or maybe annoyed that, uh, the title screen had the music of the title screen from the first game. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the music from the first game, just that it was bothering me that I was playing a new thing that had, like, and I'm, like, logging into this new game, and it has old music in it. So I was like, man, I really want to have something in place. Uh, so 
I kind of came up with this thing. I think it might be a bit too dramatic, but uh, let's take a listen. Yes. So that's all it is so far. Uh, I really dig it. It still sounds a bit incomplete. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. It's still still haven't really decided what to do with it yet. Uh, I am very happy with it, um, but we'll see. I think I think we um, well. I'll probably just get it in the game and at least have something new for the the early access players because i really want so to me like title music title screen music is like a super important part of the experience of a game because it 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 informs the player of well the the best title music will inform the player of what uh what to expect from the rest of the game. And I kind of want, I want even the early access players to be able to have this feeling like when they start up the game that they're playing a new thing and the title screen music will help them achieve that, I feel like. Um, but yeah, it's not finished. There's a lot that I want to add. It's, it's a little uh, thin, I feel like. It needs like more, uh, more oomph to it uh, but a lot of what I did was just sort of pure writing of like the uh, melodies and, and chords and everything so yeah it's it needs it needs some work but I'm super happy with how it's turning out already uh, let's let's play it again here so we can kind of go over what the different parts of it. So this is like, this part is like an intro. Uh, this part is probably where I spent the most amount of my effort on here. And then this, this is me just sort of expanding various ideas. Oh yeah, so for this part... Let me pause that. So, uh... This part, here...
Uh, that is taken from another track that I already did and I've shown a couple of times on the stream. And maybe we'll load it up later so you can hear it. Um, I was, as I was building this out, I was like, oh, you know what? This, this bit of melody could fit here. And I put it in and it worked really well. Hey, Otter Taco. <laughs> I love it. TJ asks, what do you do when you don't have to make music for games? Well, making music for games is my full-time job. Um, so it's what I do. Uh, I'm hoping to eventually get time to do more live music. Um, but I don't really know when that'll happen. All right, all right, so you heard this part here. This is a bass line. This might get changed too. It's kind of boring. I really wanted it to be simple, and that so it is. But uh, still, it's not really not really sold on it yet. Uh, the fun thing about doing a three-four time signature was I had to like re totally rethink the percussion, which is fun. Because for sub, for below zero, I've been sort of like uh, like falling back on certain patterns so this has been good um okay so let's see here this is a fun thing that is a technique that i've used with i can load this up here omnisphere where I load up a single Omnisphere uh, instrument, or yeah, in a channel, and then I load up multiple instances here, different things. And then put them all through arpeggios, arpeggiators, and then uh, have them all play simultaneously, and you get and make a kind of pattern. You know, we'll, we'll just make one right now. Show you what I'm talking about. Here. It's kind of a fun way to make uh, like glitchy percussion. So, we'll on this here. Uh, Time Traveler asks, Has you, have you finished the first Subnautica game? You know, I've put in, I don't know, hundred something hours of Subnautica and never actually finished any of the story bits. Um, like I played it for when it first came out on early access and it was like it kind of similar state that below zero is in now. And then, uh, and then I played it again, like a year later when it was more complete. And then again, when it released and now I'm playing it for a fourth time. And I usually get like 20 to 35 hours in for all those playthroughs. That's about how far I would get. And then I would stop playing. Um, but now I'm actually trying to finish it since I've never actually done it. And now I'm working on the new one. So I've been playing through a lot of it. <clears throat> all right. All right. So we can look through. There's a lot of like neat presets in Omnisphere for just odd, like uh, glitchy sounds. So electro percussion might be good. So we just like try out these different presets, right? Okay, this is good. So this is like, boy, I gotta get one of those stream decks so I can quickly cha change cameras here. 
So this this instrument I just loaded is like pretty nice. There's another one. Ooh. All right, all right. Let's just try. Let's start with this. So we get this little glitch thing. So then I load up the arpeggiator. We we'll start with blank. Um. Oh, the acid rain s. Uh, have you upgraded your atmosphere two two point five? No, I've I've been meaning to. It's like on my list uh, to do list, and I still haven't uh, haven't uh, set it up yet. I uh, just haven't gotten around to it, but it looks awesome. Okay, so we load up like this is an arpeggiator, so. Right, so so now we've got a little sound, and then I go to uh, the second instrument here. This one's blank now. Um, we're gonna actually, actually, before we do that, we're gonna mute this so we can check this out without anything sounds. We'll put also put this one on channel one so that it gets the same MIDI input. And then we'll load some other glitchy thing. Uh, electro percussion, let's see here. What else we got? Make sure it's not too loud. Mm, might be kind of cool if we uh, turn it down. Sure. We can even like turn on filters. Well, that sounds awesome, right? I don't know if that's going to work. So Let's well let's try it with the arpeggiator. Blank. Make it eight. Make it sixteen steps. And we'll turn the length way down. Here we go. And down this. And then we'll turn these down. Now we turn this back on. Oh yeah, I al I always almost die of a heart attack whenever uh, warpers they warp me out of my little sea moth. It's terrifying every time. I love it. See, look at that. We just did this two little, like, um, we, we took two little glitch sounds, we put them through the arpeggiator, and now we have a neat little rhythm. It's fun. Hey, Sultanus. 
And then you can further edit it by like changing the EQ around. That's a little nicer, right? We can even do like add modulation. Whoa, there's a whole bunch of mod stuff here, huh? I'm pretty good. We're just messing around with the uh, making glitchy percussion patterns, and it's really fun. Uh, we can try another one too. Uh, let's see here. First, let's mute these other ones. I mute the entire part. I'll just turn off the pieces of them for now. Okay, third one. What else we got in here? Oh right, we gotta actually set up the channel. Here. Channel one. Oh, that's kind of cool. Uh, let's transpose the pitch down here. Minus 12. And then, here. All right, so now we turn all this back on. Hey, Disparity. Welcome. So yeah, this is the technique that I use to get, like, fun glitch percussion really quickly. And then you can, you know, Add other stuff. We can do that more filter that we do a lot of. Bypass that. You can also do like add a delay. One of my favorite things to do. All right, this might be too comp complex for a good delay. But it's an option. Perfect. Discard. So yeah, that's how I did the one. Just like a little bit of extra percussion. I'm going to keep that around because it's pretty neat. Keep that. So then I did a similar thing for this. This is a uh, three, four time. It sounds a little different than the other one. Uh, so anyway, yeah. Go back to this part here. So the rest of it is the telephone kit that I've been using for a while for other uh, below zero stuff.
it's fun doing this kind of style of percussion, but for three, four time. It's, uh, it's an interesting challenge. If you put those two together. And then you add the bass line. Uh, I've got some questions here. Uh, oh, and hey, that's awesome, Jeremy. That is fantastic. Uh, this stream inspired me to start writing the music for my game intro. It's nice to get back into music. Yeah, hell yeah. Nice work. All right, and then my favorite part of this track. Oh, wait, uh, I forgot the question. Uh, what computer do you have for using all this stuff? Uh, I have a Windows PC that I built myself. Um... I built it a few years ago. It's a little old now, I guess, but CPUs haven't really uh, changed much in the last several years. So it's a uh, quad core i7. Uh, I wrote down everything somewhere here. Might be on my page. If I did have a spot on my page here. Can't remember. Yeah, yeah, it's an Intel Core i7 3.4 gigahertz CPU. Uh, and it's got, I don't know, 16 gigs of RAM or something? I don't remember. Um, but yeah, it's it works nicely. It's, it hasn't been an issue. Like, CPU power hasn't been a problem. Uh, okay, so my favorite part that I did is this thing. That was so fun to write. It's sort of like half performed and half like edited afterwards. Uh, but it doesn't you don't fully understand like what the melody is without some backing so we're gonna I'm gonna bring that in but yeah to me that one melody brings the whole thing like built Brings the whole track together. some stuff in the background too uh where's that other melody i think this is it i added this to give it some more oomph i don't know if i'll stick with that particular synth or not but that you get the idea it gives it some more weight at the very end uh and then we've got you know uh the sort of signature below zero like bell arpeggios This one. They're similar, they just have different instruments. Uh, so when you put them together, it sounds great.
Uh, but yeah, this part is my favorite part in it, and it but it needs more depth. Fumic, Fumic, Fumic. O2 asks, how can we have the Dev Watcher role? I'm not sure what you're asking, I guess. Uh, could you explain what that means? Uh, so yeah, I want to have more, like, I want to have more, almost like more strings in the background or something. Uh, Slurgy asks, <laughs> love that name. Slurgy asks, when an individual track's stem is grayed out and cubase, does that mean it's muted or bypassed? Yes. So, like, this thing here is muted. Um, so you can mute individual pieces of, of a track rather than just the whole track. If you hit the M over here, this little M key will uh, mute it. Uh, this is gray just because its color is gray. Change it to something else. There we go. Uh, well, anyway, uh, so yeah, this is really the only like sort of pad string part in this. But I want to make it. I want to make it bigger and like. So there'll probably be more stuff added to that. Give it more drama. Yeah, that's this is a piece that I worked on. I started it last week. Um, been working on it a bit here and there since then. Now's a good time to go nine eight meter. I do sometimes try to go for really weird time signatures. Um, it can be really satisfying to do something really odd. I did seven four for some of the stuff in Into the Breach. I did one particular run in Gravity Ghost that was really a, a really strange time signature too, but I can't remember what it was. I, I should do something 5-4 because I love the 5-4 time signature and I should do something like that for below zero. Um, oh! I'll, let's open up the other track that has this melody in it, and so you guys can you can all hear what it sounds like in the other piece. Uh, this part. Oh, and that noise splash is supposed to be like a reference to the, it sounds a bit different, but it's supposed to be a reference to the original Subnautica that had a lot of that, like a noise splash sound. It doesn't sound precisely like it, but I think people who've played the original a lot will sort of recognize that reference, hopefully. <clears throat> All right, let's load up another piece. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm happy to answer any questions about 
game music or music production or game development, whatever. Being an indie. Oh, Slurgy asks a good question. I'm curious about the guitar riffs in Into the Breach, especially the bits that are mostly harmonics with some delay in a lot of the tracks. Uh, were those played live or were they since? Those were all played live by me. It's uh, like sort of guitar rhythm parts. It's like muted guitar. Um, played on this guitar right here. It's my uh, Fender Stratocaster HSS. I love this thing. Not really do using it much for below zero, although I might at some point. That was sort of like the signature sound of uh of Into the Breach. In fact, I wrote an article for PC Gamer talking about how oh, I did it here. Let me find it. There was a brief time when I was writing for PC Gamer, and it was pretty fun, but too time-consuming. Oh, hey, Ms. Dope Sauce. Hello. Uh, here's the article. Uh, so if you're curious about the guitars and Into the Breach, <clears throat> how it came to be, uh, there's the article for it. Okay, so here's the track from from another part of the game. I think this is going to be Lily Pads. Hey, Dope Sauce, thank you for the raid. We're just about to listen to another track here. All right, so this is probably going to be for the lily pads area. That's what I've kind of sort of decided on. Actually, let me. Mm, mute this for a second so I can make sure everything loads up. All right, and this one's also unfinished. OK, here we go. Hey, thank you. Thanks, what's up, Rockstar? All right, so there's that melody we were talking about. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Thank you. So yeah, that's the track probably going to be for lily pads. Um, and uh, I took that melody, this this thing here. Uh, And, you know, I took that and I used it in the title music that you heard earlier. Um, so, yeah. Hi, new people. Um, in case you don't know, uh, I'm Ben. And you might know my music, my work from uh, FTL or Into the Breach or The Dark Side Detective or possibly, if you're super hipster, maybe Dead Secret um, or Gravity Ghost. So, uh... And right now I'm working on the soundtrack to Subnautica Below Zero, which is the new sort of semi-sequel standalone expansion to Subnautica. And to be clear, I have not I did not work on the original Subnautica. I was not part of that team. I've only joined for Below Zero. And thanks for all all y'alls for coming. Um It's cool. And thank you for the raid, Ms. Dope Sauce. Ms. Dope Sauce worked a little bit on FTL as well. She she contributed her voice to the uh, to the female crew member in uh, FTL. And thank you all for the follow, all the follows. It's great. Um. All right. So let's. Let's load up another new track. This one is brand new. No one's heard it yet. I started it yesterday. So this will be the first time uh, I've shared it. And also, I do these I do these uh, streams to share my creative process and uh, and to answer questions people have because I want my goal is to sort of demystify music production. <clears throat> anyway, um, my goal is to demystify music production and make it easier to understand and show people that it's not like 
some kind of uh Some kind of like, uh, man, what is going on? Yes. Uh, I want to show that it's not some kind of strange, arcane, mystical thing, and just like a thing that anyone can do, even if it's complicated and difficult. Um, whoa. All right, well, Cubase just crashed. That's new. Let's try that again. Uh, Sunstorm asks, are you the only one music producer for Subnautica Below Zero? Yes. Uh, the goal is to have all the music replaced. Uh, not replaced, but all the music will be new for Below Zero. Yeah, it happens. It's not a big deal. Uh, my I have Cubase set to bat, to uh, save files every five minutes, so even if something does crash while I'm working on it, it's not a huge loss. Subglitch asks Ben, how? Yeah, this is probably the the problem here. All these little yes convert yes. Um. How much time do you spend browsing and searching for presets? Oh, I see what happened. Eh, it's okay. We, it wasn't a very useful thing anyway. Uh, I do spend a lot of time. Uh, less time now than I used to. It's a lot of it is just getting to know the instrument that you're browsing presets on. You kind of know where to look for the things that you want. Um, and some of it is just experience where you, you kind of know how to get the sound you want. But I do still spend a lot of time browsing through presets. It's just a thing that you kind of have to go through. All right, let me make sure everything sounds OK, and then I'll All right, otherwise it looks all good. Let me uh, set this up. All right, so this is a new track. I, I'm not sure where it will go. It's for Below Zero, but I'm not really sure what we're going to use it for. Um, I, kind of, I kind of started it on a whim. And so I didn't really have a plan when I started it, which is fun. Sometimes you, go, you get interesting stuff when you do that. This one's very chill and ambient, so it's a little bit more low-key. Uh, Jacob, this is a different thing than than last what I mentioned before.
So, yeah, that this is so like fresh that I didn't even really remember what it sounded like <laughs> until I played it just now. Uh, I literally started this yesterday. Hey, retatch. Uh, I hope this uh, helps. And I don't always know, I don't necessarily know how other musicians work in the industry. Um, this is just how, how I work, but it still can give you a lot of insight regardless. Um, I don't know where this is going to go. Like I said, I really want it to be an underwater thing. I just don't know what yet. Uh, but yeah, it's, a lot needs to be added. Like, there's just, like, this long stretch here where not a lot happens once the texture sort of comes in, like the percussion and the and the bass line. And the vocals, I kind of like, but they, they're a little bit out of place. I don't know. It may be just that they were too loud and I could just need to turn it down a little. Yeah, it's too loud. Okay, so we got a couple of questions. Uh, this is not, um, this is not FL Studio. This is Cubase. Cubase is what I use. Although I do use Ableton also for live stuff. Um, I don't know where this is going to be used. This is definitely like a music for some kind of biome, uh, exploring, exploration. Uh, I intended it for to be underwater. But that's pretty much as far as I've gotten so far. I don't really know where else or what precisely it's going to be used in. I was zipping around the, the map yesterday in the game, uh, looking at different areas and talking with the team about what kind of vibes we're going for for different places. Um, possibly tree spires? Maybe? This might be cool for that. Um, but anyway, yeah, so that's it's it's very simple. It started out with just this. This was originally like this is all it was at first. It's just this little bit of And then I just sort of built on top of that, uh, added the this like pad underneath. Thanks for all the follows, everybody. Uh, Retach asks, do you often imagine a scenario and then produce towards it, or are you more often producing for music for a particular scene already captured? Uh, it's a little bit of both. Most of the time, I'm just tr I ask the team of like like what vibe are we going for for this area, or what does this look like, or whatever, and I'll, or I'll look at the art or I'll play it in the game and I'll say and I'll sort of hey thank you for the host um look at the art play the game get a kind of feel for what they're going for talk to the team of what they want from it and then I'll sort of write from there or I often just start writing stuff with sort of a general vibe of uh what I feel like could work in the game and then midway through I'll decide where it should go and then keep like keep writing and sort of bend it towards that particular vibe or area or whatever um oh yeah so we started out with that just that simple melody and then I added this bed underneath which is just like a pad It's something I built in Omnisphere myself a while back, so I don't really remember what I did for it. Just some kind of synth drone. And it goes. So 
But yeah, I didn't really even think about like the theory behind this or chords or even the scale. I was just sort of playing notes and going from there. Uh, G minor is a good guess. Probably that. Yeah, I would say it's. That's probably correct. Yeah, the bass line is an E. So I'm thinking maybe it is, maybe it's an E. Some kind of E scale. Oh, I must have accidentally hit something. And this is a sine wave. Oh, I do kind of like the vocals when it's a lot quieter like that. That's pretty cool. So then we've got... These two things, which are both arpeggios, similar to where what you hear elsewhere in the soundtrack in Below Zero. And then the bass line. a bongo part that I did. This will probably get modified over time, too. It makes for a nice, like, rolling rhythm. Everything's working pretty well. I'm actually quite pleased coming back to it today after away from it for a night. And then we get this vocal part. So yeah, I gotta add something in here. I don't know. Whoops. Ooh. So yeah, we can just like loop this. Because this is the part that's just like, doesn't really do anything, it just sort of loops this one thing. So you could like loop this and then just sort of mess around with notes.
So yeah, it's a fun way to just sort of practice and try to figure stuff out. Oh, Jacob's got a question. Uh, oh, we got two questions. One from Retach. Yes, that is the MIDI Fighter Twister. I barely ever use it. Not even hooked up right now. It's very cool. I just don't have that much use for it. I, the, the original purpose of getting it was for live stuff, but I haven't really worked it into my live stuff yet. Uh, Jacob asks a question. Uh, have you ever legitimately learned piano or music theory through lessons with a teacher? Not with a teacher, but I still it's still legitimate. <laughs> uh, I taught myself. I bought books on music theory and books on how to play piano, and I taught myself. Um, Follow-up question. How well can you read sheet music? Well, I can kind of read it. Not just, not particularly well. I can, I can read and write sheet music, but I can't. Sight reading is, is pretty hard for me. Um, hey, Marilyn Maverick. Welcome. I haven't seen you in a while. Um, so yeah, it's been, been a while since I sort of taught myself and I feel like I need to like refresh. I never, I've never really gotten all that good at uh, piano. As you can see, I was sort of just doing single note like melodies and nothing like uh, nothing particularly co complicated. Uh, after I, after doing piano for a while, I kind of like just sort of stopped working on that, and I've been doing guitar instead. Although recently, I haven't really been playing guitar either. <laughs> Uh, just been too busy with soundtracks, so. But yeah, mostly, most of my music stuff self-taught. I learned to read and write sheet music in high school for my band class, because I played trumpet. But even then, I didn't really understand the underlying theory at the time. I, I could read it and sight read, but uh, I didn't learn, learn theory till I was an adult. <clears throat> Uh, Retouch asks, what's your live music like? Well, I haven't done a live show in like a year, but uh, I use Ableton on a laptop with a push controller. Um, and I'm hoping to incorporate guitar into that at some point. I'm going to start working on live music again soon. Um, and I will hopefully... The plan is to do... Add another... Uh, live stream every week where I do live stuff. And uh, yeah, it'll be really fun because now, now that I have like this camera, I've got like the desk cam, I can like set up the push controller right here and you can be able to see what I'm like working on. So yeah, eventually I will have that, but I just it's just been so long since I've done any kind of live stuff that um it's gotta I gotta practice again. Oh yeah, that's that's a good point, Slurgy. Actually, yeah, I was doing I sort of like deconstructed uh Camille Saint Saens Aquarium recently, and that was really fun to do, and I, I did feel like I learned a lot just from doing that. Uh, let's listen to this again. See if I can give any other insight. It's pretty simple. But, uh, I'm really happy with the, the atmosphere.
probably going to change this transition at some point. Get, make it a smoother transition. Okay, cool. Uh, we got some questions now. Uh, Retach asked, do you ever review other musicians' scores for tips on like a Discord server or something? I used to do that, and then I got overwhelmed by requests. Uh, so I don't do it anymore, because it's just, it takes a lot of time, and it's overwhelming. So I can't, I don't really offer uh, advisory type stuff anymore. This this show is sort of supposed to like fill that need a bit. Um I get I get emails almost every day from mostly students asking for advice on their music. And I used to I used to like put effort into answering every single one as well as I could. And it eventually just like it was too much. I couldn't do it anymore. Uh so, yeah, I can't do it anymore. However, I will be opening a Discord this week, um, possibly even before tomorrow's show. Uh, there is sort of an unofficial Discord, and uh, I will be taking it over as, like, administrator. Um, and, yeah, it'll be, a, it'll be a, an official Discord for this channel. And there's people have already been sharing music on it. Um, and I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna reorganize it a bit, be a bit more formalized, and put in some some uh, you know rules for like conduct. And uh, yeah, I will. I will uh, have that ready either by tomorrow or the next show. Um, Retach is asking, is this 120 BPM? Uh, I don't know. I don't remember. 95 BPM. Um, but anyway, in with the Discord, I hope to at least occasionally pop in and, like, give feedback on stuff that people have posted. Hope to, but I really can't promise anything. Um, Sparity asks, "How did the big Metro Music search go?" By the way, I actually don't know what you're what you're talking about. Uh, Jacob says, "You know the caves that go through to get to the glacial basin." It sounds like it fits there. You know, I don't think I've actually gone through those caves. I always just warp to the glacial basin and then wander around. Um, Jacob asks, can we have an invite link to that unofficial? Well, I will send the link when it's ready in its new form. So tomorrow I'll have it. Or, or the next show, if not tomorrow. And I'll post it on Twitter too, so if you come onto Twitter, uh, you'll be able to... Follow, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll be able to get a link there too. Um, Jacob asks, how do you decide what tempo your song should be? Do you just record something and then take a BPM from that? Um, that's a good question. It's, it's always kind of a subtle thing. 
I sometimes I'll just have an idea like a rhythm in my head and then I translate it to the BPM or sometimes I will when trying to come up with new ideas I will pick a BPM that's uh, that I haven't really used yet or something different from what the other pieces are so what I do is I write down uh, the tempo of every track that I work on for a particular project and then I can look at all all of those tempos together and I'm like oh where there where is there a gap of like something that doesn't that fall like a tempo that hasn't been used yet and then um, And then uh, I'll try that out, and I'll I'll just like work within that tempo. For the D and D thing, you're making music that would fit a big city feel. Oh yeah, you know I actually haven't even followed up on that yet because I've been too busy doing other stuff. Um, so I haven't really checked out all the music that people very kindly shared with me that they found uh, on Twitter. Retach asks, would you say Twitter is a good place for networking in this industry? Yes. Uh, I would say so. All, pretty much all game developers are on Twitter. Um, AAA, indie, all of them. Uh, Twitter is very common uh, communication tool among game developers. So I would say if you want to get into game development, uh, and you don't have a Twitter account, you should get one. Um, Hey, Herfmuth. <clears throat> Welcome back. Timber96 asks, is it easy to start learning music? Not really, it's a bit hard. Um... This way or using instruments? I would say start out learning an instrument first. And you don't even have to do it for a particularly long time. Spend just like a few months learning an instrument and like learn the music theory behind it. Learn how to play melodies and chords if it's like a piano or a guitar or something. Uh, and then once you have a little bit of a foundation for like how music itself works, you'll have a much better time diving into one of these workstations. Because um, one of the problems that, that non-musicians have is they're like, I want to make music. I'm going to get one of these workstations like Cubase or something or GarageBand or whatever. But then they don't know how to actually make musical content. And they get frustrated because they're like, they have this like, canvas in front of them but no way to actually make anything with it and that can be really frustrating yeah timber it can be really confusing i totally understand guitar is a good one though because there are a lot of resources for it out there um if you're learning guitar if you have an electric guitar get rocksmith uh rocksmith 2014 you can get it on steam you can get it uh for playstation i don't know if it's for ps4 or ps3 i don't remember but uh if you've got some kind of output on it you should definitely get um rocksmith because it really helped me a lot and it's really fun But yeah, stick with it. It'll get less confusing over time. <clears throat> yeah, no, that's that's a legit thing. <laughs> TJS says, uh, sometimes when I open an instrument in FL Studio, I start pressing random chords and choose what I like. Uh, yeah, that does. That's a legit thing. Totally do that. I've done that before. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
I mean, don't if you just if you just spent money on an acoustic, don't don't go spending more money on an on an electric. Just keep going with what you have. Um, let's see, do I have any other new stuff to share? Let me let me take a look here. But yeah, feel free to ask more questions. I'm excited to have that Discord in place once that once that's uh once it's all ready. Uh, well, since actually, since the Glacial Basin is the latest update, let's uh, load up the Glacial Basin music I made. Oops, I think I loaded the wrong thing. Uh, Subglitch asks, did you hear music from Deep Sky Derelict's game? No, I did not. I've not heard of that. Um... Retach asks, is this your full-time gig? Yes. Wrong file. Oh yeah, the jukebox track. Yeah, let's do that. Let me uh, find it here. Two, okay, here we go. So yes, uh, to I just sort of gave you a one word answer there, retach. But yes, I, I do this full time. Uh, I run my own business. I work as a contractor for game developers, and uh, I also own the rights to almost all of my music. And so I sell it on Bandcamp and Spotify and iTunes and Google Play and Amazon and everything. Uh, okay, here, it's going. I say it very casually, like, oh, I run my own business and, and I own the rights to my music. But there's a lot behind that, too. Like, there's 
of much of my work is not just writing music, it's also running my business. Okay, so here's something I'm working on. This is an old piece that I uh, wrote, originally started uh, for Photographs, which is the last game that released of mine. Um, and I started it and found that it did not fit at all for photographs, so I sort of ditched it, but I really liked it, and I thought I would adapt it into something. But I didn't know what at the time, but now I think it'd be a good piece for the uh, Below Zero jukebox. So yeah, as you can see, it's undeveloped, not, not like, uh, definitely not finished, but it sounds cool and I'm excited to finish it because it's a very neat style that I like a lot. Uh, Retach asks, where would you say most game developers first come in contact with you? Is it through word of mouth or a particular network? Uh, it's a little bit of both. Um, but I am established, so whatever methods I use to connect with people uh, aren't necessarily, like, guaranteed or, or what you should use for advice for how you go about doing things. Uh, the whole reason I have a career is uh, FTL. Like, FTL exploded, and... I was in demand after that, and I am current, like, still in demand. Um, so, yeah, it's 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 a lot of it's networking through friends and talking to people on Twitter, and uh, and a lot of luck. Slurgy asks, "How did you get on FTL?" Uh, so. It was sort of a friend of a friend thing. Uh, I had been trying to do... I was working on Gravity Ghost at the time, and uh, I was trying very hard to like break into the this sort of new indie scene back in 2010, 2011. And... Uh, so... I was telling everybody I knew that I was trying to make music for games. I did manage to get onto Gravity Ghost because I showed up to a game jam uh, that Aaron Robinson was at, and we we like talked, and I got attached to that. She liked my work, and I liked Gravity Ghost. It seemed like a cool thing. That's how I got on that. And then a friend of mine uh, came over one day and. He said, hey, uh, an old college friend of mine is making a spaceship game, and I know they need music, and I know you do music, so uh, do you want to take a look at the game? And he had an a, a early build of the game on a U USB stick, and that turned out to be FTL, and 
And I was like, oh, this is really cool. Yeah, I want to do something for this. Uh, so I spent that weekend writing a preliminary piece that I thought would kind of fit based on what I had sort of known that they were looking for. And that piece eventually became the title music for FTL. And I sent that to them and they liked it. And so we started working together and that's, that's how that happened. Um, and you know, at the time I was working, I was talking with lots of people making, you know, just making games in their spare time or, or in the case of the FTL guys, they quit their jobs and just worked on it full time. Uh, there are indies everywhere. None of us, none of us thought that FTL would explode the way it did. We just it was just making this cool space game. We thought that we believed it was so like esoteric and odd and uh, like a spaceship roguelike strategy game seemed like such a niche thing at the time. This is before. Uh, steam's uh green light program so this was like before indie games just sort of like were flooding into steam every day you know like it is now and so there was we didn't nobody knew what the market was going to be like in a couple of years so we just we were just like oh yeah we're making this weird space game and maybe maybe some people will enjoy it we had no idea that it was going to be this giant hit. Uh, the first time we got an inkling of it was when uh, they ran the Kickstarter and they asked for... I don't remember what they asked for now that I think about it. Um, something like 10000 and then ended up getting 200000 I think. And that was, like, unprecedented at the time. There weren't that many game Kickstarters. The only other one was the uh, Double Fine's uh, adventure game, uh, Broken Age. Let me confirm those numbers here. Go to the Kickstarter, the original Kickstarter. Yeah, 200,000, but they asked for 10,000. It was nuts. We had no idea. Or twenty thousand. Um, so yeah, it was, it was crazy. And then, of course, we still didn't really believe what was happening, <laughs> and we were like, "Well, those Kickstarter backers represent the entirety of the players that we'll have." We we for for whatever reason we could not fathom that it would keep getting more popular. So we were just like, "Oh yeah, well." We'll make the game, and it'll go to the Kickstarter backers. They'll love it, and no one else will play it. And then, of course, that obviously wasn't true either. Um, but yeah, and then it just kept exploding. And then, yeah, so then I became in demand. And uh, that's, that's how I have my career, and I'm continuing to uh, build on it as I go. And I've worked on a lot of games since then. Um, Gravity Ghost came out. I started on it before FTL, but it came out after FTL. Gravity Ghost and the Dark Side Detective, uh, Star Crawlers, um, Photographs, which just came out, uh, the Dead Secret series, which is a series of like VR murder mystery horror games, which I love. They're great. Um, I've released a bunch of standalone albums. I run my own business. I <clears throat> I do this live stream. I do live shows occasionally, although I haven't done any in a while. Um, yeah. So there's a, there's a lot of work that goes into it, and making sure that I have income continually, and uh, change it to face cam here. It's, it's 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 a ton of work and it's not easy and i got super lucky now i don't want to like discourage anyone from trying to do this from from like making an attempt to getting into the industry but it's 
uh, chances are very low. Like, so Retach asks, from your experience, what would you say the demand for custom music in the game industry is at the moment? High, low, no idea. So there's, there is demand in that every game, generally every game needs music. Like 99% of games need music. However, uh, the, the need for composers is like, the demand for new composers is very low. Most teams like to work with people that they've already worked with. Um, and then, uh, you, you can have a team of like 20 people on a game and only one of them needs to be a musician, you know, like below zero is a team of like 30 people, but there's only one musician on the group. There's like so many programmers, there's tons of demand for programmers, but like, a, one musician can cover the music needs for an entire game. Even AAA games will only have like a team of like four or five musicians often. So it's it's kind of tough. And also, I want to the other thing I want to emphasize is uh, the the thing with FTL and and me getting it. It's not like I just like emerged out of school and then was like handed FTL. Um I am 35 35 years old. I was 29 or 30 when FTL came out. I had been spending years trying to get into the industry before then. Um trying to make music for games. I made a lot of music for student games and games that were canceled, lots of indie projects that went nowhere. Um if you listen to my albums like Chromatic T-Rex or Fragments, those are a lot of those have a lot of pieces of music that I made for games that never went anywhere. And uh there's sort of a a saying in in the game development community that it's like you have to make like 10 games before you have one that's a hit. And that's that's that sounds about right. I worked on a lot of projects, a lot of different things before FTL came out, and that's why that's one of the reasons why the soundtrack, you know, is quality because I have a, had a ton of experience already. Uh it's not I think a lot of people will picture when they think of me and like me as a composer, they imagine that I was like like I was like 22 or something and, and finished some sort of prestigious music school, which I didn't. Uh, and then was immediately handed FTL, right? Coming right out, to, out of school. And then like, you know, had success from there. But it wasn't. I had, I had a ton of different jobs. Ms. Dope Sauce knows. She was there for it. Um, she knew me before I was cool. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> I I worked at Google for a couple of years. I worked uh at cleaning bathrooms at a resort hotel. I I worked sh unpacking shipping crates at like 3 a.m. for uh, uh the container store. I was a, an assistant manager at a GameStop for a little while. Uh I did a lot of things. I worked at a nonprofit that <laughs> Thanks, Ms. Dope Sauce. I worked at a nonprofit that recorded books on tape for people with learning disabilities, which was an awesome job. It's one of my favorites I had before doing music. Um, and all that time, I was training myself to 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 make music. I was writing music in my spare time whenever I had it, um, and teaching myself music theory and piano. And banjo, yes, I, I was. I did play banjo for a while. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, so it was a long, weird road to get to where, to FTL being, like, a big success. So I just want to emphasize that, like, it's going to be complicated and it's going to take a while if if you find success and and success is in no way guaranteed it's uh i believe uh 
Rami Ismail said it really well on Twitter when he said that, like, success is a dice roll, but you still have to put in the effort to get to roll the dice at all. It's like, you still need to, like, put in the work and and learn these things and, you know, learn music theory, learn to be a good producer, uh, uh, music production person. I don't know. Uh, and learn how the industry works. Learn how... Why we have so many different platforms uh, and, and how they all interact and what the audiences are for all of them. And learn networking and learn how to meet game developers and uh, go to the things that they go to and all of these things are relevant and important and so the more you can do while you're looking for your sort of big break or a project that you can attach to and work on you know and the more you can do is the better So yeah, I hope that helps. Yeah, Jacob brings up a, a good point where it can be kind of uh, expensive to get into this. Yeah, uh, there's a sort of a significant uh, initial investment that you have to make. Oh yeah, yeah, that's my octopus. That's Steve. He's sitting up on top of the water foam. And I've been trying, I've been saying for like a couple of years now on the live stream that I'm, I'm going to want to write up a, like a guide for new musicians, uh, people who want to get into computer music. And I've never been able to like make anything that I'm really satisfied with. There's no really super cheap way to get, to get into uh, music production. Like you can, you can use some free tools but it's never you're always going to be really limited and it's going to be frustrating uh a, a pastron a pastron asks is equipment 100 percent necessary to make music or can software be sufficient uh well it depends on Sort of what you're going for, but I know that's a terrible answer, so let me let me revise that. Uh, you need some amount of hardware, um, but you don't need much. Uh, I would recommend getting some kind of uh, USB audio device, like uh, the Focusrite Scarlet, one of the Scarlet series. Uh, get one of those, and maybe a little keyboard of some kind. And those two things will take you pretty far if you combine that with software. Uh, Larry D. Larry Day asks, or Larry, I don't, I'm not sure, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. Uh, how much do you think that you need to spend on a computer? Well, not that much. You want CPU and RAM for for doing these things, and if you're just starting out, you probably don't need much else emphasize but if you have a computer already you can probably use it to make music yeah those are those are good slurgy has good uh, recommendations there 
Um, and the the small the smallest scarlet ones, like the solo and the two i two, they're like they're they're pretty cheap relatively. And then you can get a little MIDI keyboard for like a hundred bucks or less. <clears throat> and then most of the digital audio workstations have a hundred dollar version. That's like a beginner version. Not beginner, but it's like it's like a, a toned down version, but it's still really useful and can cover a lot of what you might do in the beginning. Um, and they still usually work for work uh, with VSTs, which is sort of a um, it's where you get like software instruments. But yeah, you know, I should just I'll just write this stuff down and then I'll put it on the on the Twitch page. Anyway, uh, it's almost time to wrap it up, so let's listen to this one more time before we uh, head out. Oh, hey! Thank you for the bits! Um... First time viewer here. You making all the music for Subnautica Below Zero? Yes, I am. <clears throat> um, the plan is to have all of the music in Below Zero be um, new music. So anyway, this is going to be. Um, This is going to be for the jukebox. This is going to be one of the tracks that you can play in the jukebox that that you can craft in Below Zero. It's a new feature in Below Zero. And uh, I'm making some custom pieces just for the jukebox. Uh, I'm not really sure how you're going to get the, the music. I was hoping that they would be, that we would hide them as like items to find in the world. But I don't really know if we've decided on that being the definite thing or not. Uh, Retach asks, when creating music that transitions from one scenario to a next, say a cave, to an outdoor scene, are you considering things like key and tempo in these transitions, or is it often a simple fade out, fade in? Well, it can be both. Uh, it can be a fade out, fade in, and also stay in the same key or the tempo or something. Uh, it's totally, it's totally, uh, up to the, it's based on the scenario itself. Um, I may do like one piece that I split up into layers, um, and then have them, have those layers triggered by different points as you go through a particular sequence or something, or, uh, in the case of like FTL, it's like two, two pieces and, and they're very similar that have different energy levels and it just cross fades between the two. So it depends entirely on this on what we're doing or what we're trying to go for. Yeah, I don't know how it would fit into the alien world thing, but I guess there's already debris and stuff uh scattered around in the world. So you can imagine that somebody's like PDA with a piece of music on it could also be scattered around. All right, let's listen to this one more time before we head out.
Thanks. Uh, yeah, I'm going for kind of a loungy feel. Um, and similar to like the glitch stuff that I remember listening to when I was like in college. Uh, Retach asks, Ben, before you leave, are there any other channels you can recommend for following for similar content? The only one I know of, I don't really actually watch a lot of Twitch. I don't really watch a lot of anything. Uh, it's really hard for me to watch shows. Um, uh, or, or live streams. I don't know. It's like ADHD thing, maybe. I'm not really sure. Uh, but, uh, Autopilot, if you've ever watched Autopilot, uh, if you haven't watched Autopilot, you should. It's pretty amazing. Uh, he he does live streams where he like does live improv, and he's amazing. Autopilot. Let me make sure I got the spelling right, and then I'll. Yeah, this guy. I had it right. Oh, he's live right now. Nice. Okay, yeah, you guys have found him. Oh, maybe we'll we'll raid his channel here in a second. But yeah, he's oh man, he's so good. It's just amazing. So I've never done a raid before, so let me make sure I can actually do it. But anyway, uh that's the only one I know of. I'm gonna start looking for more though, because yeah, I wanna I have been getting questions about that and I and I don't know and, I, and I'd like to see what other people are doing because I'm just kind of like uh winging this myself Uh, autopilot's uh, st style is a lot more polished than mine. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, I'll play this again, but we'll play it l lower here. Lower volume. Um, but yeah, thank you everybody for coming by. Uh, I'm going to send you over to Autopilot. Let's see if I can figure out how to do that. So what's the difference between rating and hosting? Oh, put some into his chat. Yeah, we'll do a raid then. Hosting is that it shows up on my channel. Thanks, everybody. You're all a great help. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, I will be back tomorrow at the same time. <clears throat> and uh, we'll, I don't know, I'll probably have a little bit of new music to show, and uh, I'll be answering more questions. So, you know, please come back, say hello, ask more questions, and I will see you then. All right, see you all later. Oh, there's like a timer. 
Yeah, see, I'm just learning all this stuff as I go.